on the service bench is a realistic model DX160 shortwave receiver. And what I'm going to discuss in this video is the main reason why these receivers may have either a dead band, one or more bands that is, and or very weak sensitivity on one or more of the bands. And if you're watching this video trying to find a solution because you have a receiver with um, you know the described issue you'll be happy to know that the fix is actually quite simple so I'll just start off with some basics um, you know first of all a lot of guys think that you need to go ahead and replace all these electrolytic capacitors as a starting point not really necessary on these. I use my ESR meter, check the ESR, they're fine. The capacitors are typically in good shape on these. I've had several of these over the years and uh, of the ones I've had, um, probably three of them have had the same exact problem that I'm going to show in this video with the weak sensitivity. So you've got bands A, B, C, D, E, right? You can see it just corresponds to the A, B, C, D, E, of course, on the dial. And again, it could be either band that's uh, either dead or weak. And it's not caused by a uh, band switch. Uh, a lot of guys will suggest, well, go ahead and start cleaning the switches and controls. You could do that if you want, but typically these seem to be okay. So I'm just going to get right to the point. Uh, first off, I'm going to flip the radio around so you can get a better look at the board. So here's the coil board, and um, again, I'll just get right into the issue. It's cracked solder joints that caused the problem. So you might be thinking, well, you know, big deal. You just go ahead and just re-solder all the connections and you're going to be fine. But that's not really the case on these. It's a particular type of solder connection is what fails. And I'll just show you, there were about four of them on this receiver. Here's two right here. I'm pointing at it with my mechanical pencil here. This one and this one. Okay, now if you look closely, you'll see that there's really no trace. There's no trace at all on the top of the board where those connections are. There is also another failed solder connection. Oh, let me zoom out here. Right here. This was another failed connection. And there was also a failed connection right here. Okay. Now, what makes these particular connections unique uh, right here is that you're making the solder joint from on top of the board but the trace that the wire the there's a piece of wire coming through for the band switch and the trace is actually on the opposite side of the board there's actually an eyelet in the circuit board so when you solder this connection you get capillary action and the solder should flow under the board and make the connection to where the trace is. So let's take a look underneath. Now just remember those three connections we were just looking at. You'll see right here. See how the trace is on the back side of the board? But you could see because of the congested nature of the receiver, it wasn't designed so that you could make the solder connections for those joints 
on this end of the board. So I made a quick diagram just to show you. This is what's going on. You got the top of the board like you saw. Here's the solder connection, right? Here's the wire. You got the eyelet. And then here's the trace on the bottom. And in some cases, like one of the connections I showed you, there's actually a trace on both top and the bottom of the board. So the problem in this case is when these were soldered from the factory, you put solder into the eyelet, and what should happen is, through capillary action, the solder should actually flow and make a connection to the trace on the bottom of the board. Well, that doesn't really happen too effectively. You end up getting a very, very weak um, solder connection that is very frail and easily cracks and fails. So what happens is, and you'll see, because this is on the band switch, it's on the front end of the receiver, um, when one or, one or more of these connections fail, you lose signal on the front end of the receiver. And if it's just a cracked connection, uh, it might just be a very high resistance connection, in which case you just have reduced sensitivity. So, of course, you go ahead and re-solder it, right? You add solder wherever you see this style of connector. But if you can, try to get underneath the receiver and get a little dab of solder on this side of the eyelet. Because this is really where the connection counts. Because if you don't make the connection, if you don't uh, add the solder on the bottom side of the board, you could potentially still have uh, a, a weak solder joint that's subject to fail in the very near future. So the only reason I'm focused here is because you can you can see this area pretty clearly. There's another one way back here. You can see down there. See that one? It's behind that uh, polystyrene cap. Okay, I hit that with some solder from the back side of the board. But again, from the factory, these were not soldered on the back side of the board. So, you just got this capillary action effect, which just wasn't good enough. And they fail time and time again. So, you just beef them up with some good solder dabs on the back here, and you shouldn't have these issues anymore. So, pretty simple. See how close I can zoom in before I lose focus. So yeah, that's all you need to do. So I've had several of these, uh, several of these radios over the years, and they've all had this problem, and that was the fix: is to just resolder those particular connections wherever you see that there's no trace on the top of the board. And if you see trace on the bottom of the board, try to hit that um, with solder if you can. You might have to bend some components out of the way. So you do that, and the radio's back in service. It works great. And that's all there is to it. So I'll turn it on. Do a, a real quick demo here. I got my long wire antenna, just simply using it with the clip lead. So we're on long wave. And you can see you can really you can really crank up the AF gain 
and get a lot of noise. That's what you want. So I didn't decide to make this video until after I made the repair, but I'll just kind of demonstrate what it was like before. So I'm just going to simulate. I'll just turn the RF gain way down. This is what it would sound like. You would hear just a little bit of background white noise. And I had that on bands A, I had it on band C, and I had it on band E. Bands B and D work just fine. So, when it's working right, you can see it really, really booms. So I'm not going to bore you with a full-blown demonstration. There's plenty of other videos that show how well these receivers work. And it's kind of a love-hate radio. you got a lot of guys that really enjoy them because they remember them from their youth. And then you got a lot of guys that criticize them because they were just kind of a low-end boat anchor wannabe. But either way, I think it's a great radio. I enjoy it. I'm glad I was able to find another one again because I haven't had one in several years. So it was a nice simple fix. And hopefully, um, hopefully this video will be of benefit to you so you don't have to run in circles and do a bunch of unnecessary checks and uh, potential... Uh, component changes that aren't necessary when all you need to do is just focus on those eyelets with the trace on the bottom of the board. So that's it. Thanks for watching.